Welcome to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower, where we do our best to give you useful information in 20 minutes or less. Now, here's your host, five-time Voice Arts Awards nominee, David Brower. Thanks, Ellen. This is David Brower with your 20-minute podcast. Our special guest from Raleigh, North Carolina, is Vince Gaglione. And Vince is a guy who asks a lot of questions, not only of himself, but also of his society, the world around him. He claims he's found no real answers, but back in the day, he certainly did. The untimely passing of his significant other in early 2012 set him on a two-year journey of grieving and coping and one littered with many unexpected emotional roadblocks. As someone who enjoyed writing and keeping a journal in his formative years, he decided to dust off the old notebooks and re-engage in the practice of journal writing, therefore born the narratives. Vince, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me on the show, David. Hey, you bet. Excited to talk to you. The uh, First of all, sorry for your loss back in the day. My God, that's it, it's always interesting me to me, though, that oftentimes we're able to take a deep loss, a trauma, an accident, um, you name it. And for some reason, there's our ability to turn that into a positive to help other people. And that's kind of where the, the narratives have taken you, right? Yeah, that's, that's exactly, uh, exactly right. Um, I, um, <clears throat> uh, in 2012, as, as you had mentioned in the intro, um, I lost my significant other at the time. Um, she, she was actually, this is, this is, um, it goes back a little bit, but, um, in 2011, she lost her youngest son in an accident. Oh, wow. And, um, for uh, four months, she, I, I saw her going into this, you know, depressive spiral that just, it kept, you know, getting worse and worse. Yeah. And there was nothing that, you know, any of us were able to do to kind of, you know, get her even back to just a point of being able to function, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. And then um, <clears throat> in January of 2012, she wound up taking her life. Oh, man. Uh, so I had, I had essentially, you know, uh, the loss of her son and then her four months apart. Um, so my, the beginning of 2012 was, was very stressful, very shocking and, you know, just, uh, un unbelievable in terms of the emotions that I was going through. Well, it had to had be to unbearable. Uh, it, it was, uh, for at least initially the first couple months, I was more or less in shock. Yeah. Um, so I really wasn't feeling anything. I was just kind of numbed. And then, you know, it, it started to hit me and I had a lot of, a lot of difficult days trying to cope with it. Uh, I had a lot of help myself. I mean, I had a great support system, yeah. great family, and I was a family therapist I'd known for a long time who was helping me out. But, um, but it, it, to me, it was, there were, there are always those moments that you have throughout every day where something either reminds you or takes you yeah. back to that time. Yep. And I found many nights where I was just lying in bed wide awake. Uh, so I couldn't sleep. My brain was always turned on and there was no way to really shut it off. Right. So in September of 2012, it was about nine months after her passing. I was, I remember lying, you know, in bed. I woke, I, 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 I was kind of half in and out of sleep. I came out to the living room. I sat on the sofa and I, it was around three o'clock in the morning. I thought, I don't have anybody to call at this hour. Yeah. Um, I don't want to call anybody at this sure. hour. You know, it's like a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And um, so I decided, I, I thought back and I thought, well, I did a lot of journal writing when I was 12, 13, 14 years old. So let me just break out a, a notepad and start writing. And that's what I had done um, going forward uh, to kind of help with, you know, quieting my brain, giving yeah. me something to focus on and giving me a way and an outlet to, 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 you know, take those emotions that were bubbling inside of me and get them out onto the page. Absolutely. So it was more or less, it became a cathartic, a cathartic process. For me. I would think so. Uh, so I just continued compiling journal entries. And then, um, in late 2012, I decided to release the first set in a short book and self-published, right? Self-published, um, the book is called, the first book was called The Narratives, Keeping the Soul Alive. Yeah. It's available on all of the major ebook platforms. I also created a paperback from it. But um, that was, at, at that point, I thought, okay, well, this is what I need to do. This is good. I'm done. Um, I got, I, I, I went and I achieved what I wanted to do with this. But then. But wait, there's more. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was more. There was a lot more. Yeah. So as soon as I had published that, I, I started, I realized I had a, a more, more time. It was going to take me more time and I had a longer you know, process than I thought. Yeah. And more yeah. So I decided to keep writing. And as I um, got a bunch of journal entries together, I would just publish them in another volume. So it became a series. So as you started through that, I mean, the starting of it was monumental to say the least and cathartic, as you said, I'm sure. But did you find as you released the first narrative and then the second, did you did you feel like you needed to go back and maybe add more to the first or add more to the second or were you able to just keep moving? Well, I just kept moving because, you know, I looked at them as each, each entry I put together, um, each entry I had written was just exactly like how I was feeling at that moment. Perfect. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and, and the thoughts would be kind of random. So I found myself in the first couple sort of, you know, going back and, and rehashing some of, what I had experienced, including some metaphysical types of, you know, things that kind of popped into my, into my life at that time, yeah. you know, shortly after her passing. So I kind of went back and, and put that down in entries as well. But there were a lot of them were random thoughts. It was, you know, I found myself um, just looking at the world around me and saying, you know, seeing you know, things that were happening to other people and just passers by having like an argument in the street or whatever. I thought, Wow, there's there's so many more things that we should be worrying about than these trite little, you know, dear misses. Well, or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And so it just kind of came out in anger in a way. I would think so. And I had, you know, written about, you know, what I was seeing, what I was feeling, how it was making me feel. And it's it is about feelings. You know, I, it's it, sometimes people will uh, I used to train salespeople way back in the day. And and the first thing I would teach them is never, ever ask anybody what they think. Always, always ask them how they feel because you want mm -hmm. that true, honest, genuine, emotional answer, not something that they have to think about. Sure. And so when you're going through that, and, and I, a lot of people, I think, go through that where they're having some kind of, or they they see somebody, I've done this many times, can't even tell you how many times, where I see somebody who's who's arguing, who's in pain, who's lost somebody, who's whatever the thing is, and not to minimize it by any stretch, but I look at, at that and I go, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> right. Right? I'm, exactly. I am just fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let me see if I can go help them because I ain't got nothing. <laughs> and And so to have that kind of ability to perceive that, yeah, it's got to kind of help you zero in on some places that maybe you didn't know you could go to. Yeah, I, you know, the, I guess the thing about it was that, um, you know, I had never up to that point. I, I said I, I had said stated that I lead a, lead a pretty, you know, charmed life in a way. Yeah. I'd never really lost anybody close to me. I never experienced, you know, a lot of those, you know, serious downs in life. Sure. Um, it's all been kind of steady. You know, there was nothing really to rock the boat. And when this happened, it just kind of changed my perspective and, and how I viewed life and how I viewed, you know, the, those around me and the issues that they're dealing with. And I thought, well, you know, if I can, if I could get through this, right. then, you know, I could pretty much handle anything. Everything seems less significant in a way. Well, and the other part about that, I think is. It's you find yourself somewhere along that journey, I would think, where you go, you know, maybe these can help somebody else along the way. Yep. Right? Yeah, exactly. That whole and pay that's it forward of, thing is, yeah, is very that's how I, here. Well, I went, that's, that was the primary reason for deciding to publish um, this, this set of journal entries. Um, and yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of changed me as well. I mean, I, I, I kind of, you know, I look at things a little bit differently, and for me, it's more about community and friends yeah. and, and forming close ties. And it seems to me that, you know, these days, I seem to be the guy that, you know, everybody goes to when they have questions, when they have right. issues, when they're looking for help. So it just kind of... And you were the guy. ...happened for some right. reason. I don't know how it happened, but it just kind of did. I became like a trusted, you know, source for them. And you were the guy back in the day asking all the questions, mm -hmm. right? I still do. Yeah. But now <laughs> you've got do. other people coming to you as a, as a rock, I'm sure, yeah. in a lot of places yeah. because your energy has changed. 
Yeah, I didn't, I hadn't really thought of it in terms of energy. I have, you know, I, I've done some reading about it and I have, you know, like I said, we, you know, I had dealt with some interesting metaphysical types of things yeah. all the way. Yeah. And I had someone who told me that I'm like a natural healer. You know, this is someone who's, you know, schooled in Reiki and, sure. and uh, she's highly intuitive. And I thought, mm, okay, well, that's interesting. I, I don't really look at myself as a healer, well, but maybe. What is that, and what does that mean? Right. right? Exactly. I was looking at it in the traditional sense, yeah. but I, I wasn't really looking at it in terms of being, you know, someone who can can help people with, you know, with their issues, give them, you know, a, a, set them on a path, give them a, a clear, clearer perspective, kind of uncloud the, the there you, go. you know, yeah. uncloud things for them, yeah. make them clear. Because mm -hmm. that's what you were looking for in this process, right, is to uncloud things, make things more clear, be able to grasp the reality that you didn't really <laughs> want to grasp in any way shape or form right right i didn't know you know how long that was going to take and i didn't know if i was ever you know and once you're in it you, you i just wasn't sure if i was ever going to feel any different right you know right. i mean we ever we we know what happens right? right i mean there was no there was no real uh you know mystery surrounding this or anything but it was just a matter of you know how do i cope with this going forward am i going to look at life the same yeah as I once did, what does this mean for me in my life? You know, is this kind of like a, an albatross around my neck? So to speak. Sure, sure. Um, so yeah, it was, it, it, it was, it was certainly, um, uh, a, a learning process. So I had to kind of make peace with myself and with things in a different way. Yeah. And you had to, I would think you had to look at some things and go, I just got to let that go. Right. And I don't know how, but I just got to let that go. Yeah, I found that I was letting go things that might have <laughs> might have been things that would upset me in the past. There you go. So it's like, man, you know, life is just, there's just too many more important things to deal with here. Don't worry about these little things anymore. And actually, one of the other things that it had done is it, it kind of um, allowed me or got me to a place where I was able to refocus uh, objectively take a look at some of, you know, my friendships and my relationships, oh, yeah. and, you know, I mean, I, I had a different relationship with, with my close friends after all of this. That's um, interesting. So that was interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, not to compare it, it's not a fair comparison, but I think sometimes when people go through a divorce or loss or, or whatever, and, and friends go, oh, I guess we got to choose sides here, or they right. change, just totally change because they don't know how to approach you, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, that was that was interesting. Um, in because people, when when you have something like this happen, people really don't know what to say. Exactly, you know, and they you, you get the look from them, and you know that you know it's they're they're struggling, yeah. and so I would just kind of say, okay. Yeah. How you doing, it's, Vince? It's cool. Yeah, everything's cool. <laughs> Don't worry. You know, I know what you're what you're what we're thinking about yeah. here. So, so let's just continue on. When you yeah. started when you started becoming the rock, for lack of a better term, the healer, the whatever. I mean, obviously your listening <clears throat> skills went through the roof and mm -hmm. and your ability to be compassionate with people, but when did do you have a sense of when that kind of started to to kick in for you when people started to go, you know, I gotta, I gotta talk to Vince about this. Um, I think it, it was as I started to get myself back out there yeah. in, you know, in, in the community and, you know, participate in social activities, things I, I was doing before, but you know, they kind of got back burnered and then, you know, meeting new people, but also having a story right, and yeah. sharing that um, it kind of, I, I guess, you know, it, it resonated with people and I was able to connect on a deeper level. And I think that's the thing. And it's, you know, that goes, it goes into a lot of different areas of, of, of life and of, you know, how we function as a society. It's like, if you can connect on a, on a deeper level with people, then you have relationships that are, you know, they're better. Absolutely. They're, you know, you have, you have a, a lot more, um, comfort on a different level with people in a way. So it's like, I could talk to this person yeah. about you know, some emotional issue that's, that's on my mind and vice versa. And I think when, when you 
somehow magically combine authenticity, integrity, and vulnerability, you become the source, right? Because people not only believe you, believe your story, feel your story, but feel it in such a way that ah, I can really trust this guy with my stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, I've noticed that. And I, I have people that maybe I've just met, I've known them for a month or two months. Yeah. Someone I know in particular who, you know, has, has gone through a divorce, but just met this person um, about six months ago. But I would get the messages that say, well, thanks for listening and thank you for your insight. And I, I, for some reason, I, I know I can really trust you. I was like, wow, wow. I have known this person that long. Wow. This is- that speaks to your authenticity and your integrity, right? Yeah. And it yeah. really does. At the end of the day, really, I think that's all what all of us are looking for, whether it's in a in a job, in a friend, in a coworker, in a book we're reading, and I'm sure the narrative scream of authenticity and integrity and 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 then when you throw in that vulnerability piece, man, you are like the magnet. Right. <laughs> yeah, if people feel safe that you know they can if, if they want we all want to be vulnerable yes okay right? and a lot of times you know we have to mask it because of you know societal yep. norms etc yep. um, but they're really looking for that and if they find others that you know they feel safe with then yeah they're that that just you know helps them aids them in in their process and it, it kind of spread the thing along and it also gives them a trusted resource well it does and it also gives I mean, you're paying it forward. It also, at some point, gives them the confidence and the courage for them to pay it forward. And all of a sudden, you have this ripple effect going, touching people that you don't even know that you're touching. Exactly. We're all stronger than we think we are. Isn't that the truth? That's a (laughs) true story. Yeah, absolutely. We're all stronger than we think we are. And, And, you know, for me, I never, I could not imagine while I was in it you know, how I was going to work my way out of it. Yeah. I didn't think I was strong enough, but, you know, I, I got there. You are, and, yeah, you're like the Arnold Schwarzenegger, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's Arnold's little brother, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Folks, <laughs> the narrative series of works is a collection of short, introspective essays written by an average guy in an effort to better understand himself, his life, and his relationship with the world around him while traveling the road of self-discovery. You can find the narratives at uh, pretty much, any, I mean, Amazon, you got the Kindle version, the paperback version, and the first one in the series is Keeping the Soul Alive. And uh, people can, of course, get the books there. They can go to your uh, go to your website, too, right, which is? Yeah, website is www.vincegaglione.com. And Gaglione is spelled G-U-A-G. That's G-U-A-G-L-I-O-N-E, VinceGaglione.com. Uh, the books are there, the story about Vince, uh, social media publications, interviews, all kinds of stuff. And uh, everything's available on iBooks, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, you name it. Wow, i got to tell you, man, I've really, really enjoyed this. And uh, I want to thank you for, uh, for your journey and how you touch people, how you motivate people, how you encourage people. And uh, I, hope, uh, I hope people keep uh, asking you more questions. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm I'm kind of interested to see, you know, what life has in store for me next and where it might take me. Yeah, and then uh, and then we'll have you back and talk about that. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben. All right, thanks so much, Dave. Listen to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower on the go. Downloads are available on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, any podcast app, and on our website at davidbrowervo.com slash your 20-minute podcast. Until next time, thank you for listening.